something instead of just kind of coming in in the middle. You know, I was the third out of four children, so I just came into the middle of our family. They were waiting for a girl, and there was a lot of disappointment at my birth, but but um, I stood aside when my sister was born. It was okay. But um, we're going to be starting a whole new series of messages, a direction uh, this fall, and we're starting today. So if uh, if you've always wanted to be in on the first, you may stop wanting that after today. <laughs> <laughs> what the hey was he doing? So um, Chris and I have been meeting and talking and praying about uh, what we're going to be teaching in the fall, and we felt really ex I felt excited about um, the focus that we're going to have on being unleashed as uh, followers of Jesus and, and really discovering freedom. Um, freedom is something that's talked about a lot, it's a word that's thrown around, um, but it's not always experienced, you know, a lot of times we talk about freedom, but we kind of live our lives in bondage, uh, different ways, and, uh, and uh, this week uh, we're over at Chris's house uh, and uh, looking at various passages of the Bible, and we were both struck with how much the Bible talks about freedom, and the significance of it. In our lives. I'm thinking for something that's missed quite a bit, it's sure in the Bible a lot. And so uh, today I want us to uh, start out, we're going to look at Galatians chapter 5. And I'm going to read, I'm sorry uh, if this is hard for you, I'm going to read a lot from this passage, okay? Uh, the only benefit is I'm going to read from the message, which is uh, uh, an easier translation. But um, I hope I don't uh, hurt you with all this scripture. <laughs> it is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and then destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence, Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you'll be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? My counsel is this. Live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there's, there's a root of sinful self-interest in us that's at odds with a free spirit. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life, they're antithetical. So that you cannot live at one time one way and at other times another way, according to how you feel at any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? Then he goes on, and I want you to get this part. This, uh, he gets real specific here. It's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all-consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or to be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. I could go on and on. And then Paul says, this isn't the first time I've warned you, you know. If you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. So Lord, teach us. Teach us how to be free, truly free, and not undermine it with uh, getting distracted and running up other, other roads. Amen. Wasn't that a great passage? I thought, he, he must have known me. Um, see, and 
And the thing we're going to be hearing about all fall, by the way, is that true freedom, true freedom comes from our submitting to the authority and the power and the leadership of the Lord. That's where true freedom comes from. It doesn't come from us going, woohoo, let's go see whatever we want to do. <laughs> you know, that, that's not really freedom. Actually, we end up more in bondage. And, uh, and our lives begin to pull apart in ways that, that we don't understand. And, and we feel divided and our relationships get strained and our thoughts become clouded and, and we start to not feel like we're strong. Um, there's a there's a word that I like that's um, it, it, integrity. You, ever, you heard that word a little bit? Um, it's not the appearance of looking all together, which I thought it was, and I used to try really hard, but then I gave up, you know. But um, uh, uh, integrity is when uh, all the parts are working together and holding together, and there's stability in it, and there's uh, a sense of uh, this is what we're meant to be. Now, the opposite of integrity is, um, I've got a great word here, disintegration. Disintegration. Not integrated. It's, we're actually, wait, disintegration? That's like we're falling apart. That's the opposite of integrity. That's when we're falling apart. And, uh, and, I believe that the scripture is telling us that, that uh, Jesus entered into our world and comes into our lives when we invite him in and establishes uh, an integrity to who we are. So what the outside is the same as the inside and, and our uh, purposes and goals line up with what our actions are and we're not undermining ourselves or, or betraying ourselves. And, um, and our focus is clear because we're clear all the way through, right? No cloudiness, no illusions. That's what Jesus wants for it. And we don't all become the same, okay? Some people think, oh, well, you know, then we'll all just have to fit in. No, 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 because God made us each really individual. And if you doubt that, just turn and look around you. There are nobody like you, okay? I just want you to know that. And there's nobody like me, thankfully. And, uh, but the point is that, that we become more ourselves. We become more unique. As we let, as we let Jesus have control of our lives and, and we have an integrity and we don't disintegrate. We don't come apart. Now the, the thing about this is uh, I grew up in a family where what the neighbors thought really mattered. I never knew much about what mattered except if it affected what the neighbors might hear. You know? So I learned, you know, early on as a little kid, you know, if, uh, if I'm getting spanked, well, we, which we, yeah, we had a lot of that. <laughs> I thought of more as beatings, but, um, but the, uh, if we're getting spanked, if I would start screaming really loud at the first hit, <laughs> then Lindy Palucha and her parents would be hearing it next door, and they'd come running to see what huge disaster I'm in, and I'm wailing away, and, and, and you know, my folks are like hitting me and going, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> You hold it down, whap, you know, and I'm like screaming my head off because I know rescue's on the way because they don't want the paluchas to think badly of us. You, know, you learn, okay? You know, you learn how to do this. And uh, that carried over uh, in other ways, but um, we had such an obsession with what others thought. So instead of figuring out who we were, what we believed, or what we were going to do, we were always thinking, well, what is it that they're doing? Let's get on board with that. Then when we found out that the Paluchas were messed up, 
you know, that was kind of discouraging because they didn't know anything. And uh, so we had to move, <laughs> get better neighbors, you know. And, uh, but you know, that carries over even as adults, you know, we, so we look around to see what's, what we should do, what's acceptable, what's not. And, uh, we have words like peer pressure. Um, you've never heard that word, right? Uh, crowd mentality. That's where uh, good-hearted people get together in a group and do crazy things. And you go, how, how could they have done that? Well, the crowd just kind of did it, you know. And we get, we get pulled into it. It's very easy to do. And, uh, and, and the integrity that comes into our lives is that we're free from that. We are actually free from peer pressure. We are free from crowd mentalities. We are free from uh, uh, crazy-ass ideas. Can you say that here? No. <laughs> Wild-eyed ideas and, uh, about things, and uh, we're free for that. And, and, and Paul says, freedom is so important. God wants you to be free. But don't use it in such a way that you end up destroying the very freedom that you want and God wants for you. Because we have these tensions inside of us and our lives are lived in such a way that we want our way, but we also want to be in a loving community. We want to be in a loving relationship, but we want them to be the way we want them to be. I spent a few years in a marriage doing that, you know. I'm like 48 years, I think, right now. And she still hasn't become the person that I intended her to be. <laughs> Doggone it. Still time. Still time. <laughs> and, and she's going, I thought I could fix him. I thought I could help him. Guess what? Ah, I'm unfixable. I'm unhelpable. <laughs> you know. And, and don't go tap on the person next to you. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> so, but I go, I want my way. I have to be right. And I want to be in a loving community. Well, guess what? You don't get both, right? So I found this interesting uh, insight from one of my favorite um, writers. He was a Swiss uh, physician, psychiatrist in Switzerland, uh, Paul Turnier. This is what he says. Our human condition can never escape from the tension between irreconcilable aspirations. Those are good words. We can't give way to both of them at once. We can only give free play first to one and then to the other at the right time. A musician cannot play a do. Okay, now here you remember uh, the sound of music uh, yeah. you read about? Do a deer. Okay, ray, golden drops. Okay, so he's kind of referring to that, I guess. A musician cannot play a do without first silencing the ray and all the other notes. They can't play the other notes without silencing the dough, or plan on not producing anything harmonious, but a frightful cacophony. Making music means playing each note at the right time. We can never satisfy our moral impulses all at the same time. There's no life without repression. We cannot be generous without repressing our egotism or give way to egotism without repressing our generosity. We can't give free rein to our fancy except by repressing our need for order or give way to our need for order without clipping the wings of our fancy. In the adult, there's no laughter that does not hide secret tears, nor are there any tears behind which is not some repressed enjoyment. There is no self-giving without self-reticence, and there is no withholding without some longing to give. That's a, that's a great insight. We, we feel these clashes inside of us, and things don't seem right. And, and, and what we want to do ends up making us struggle because we know that that's not what we're supposed to be doing, but what we long for. The things we're doing will make sure that we never get what we're longing for, you know. And there's no integrity, and there's no freedom. Now, I'm an old guy, and when we learned to play music, um, chopsticks usually came first, 
right? It's very irritating to parents everywhere, still is. Um, and, but then, you know, because we're hip, you know, I'm so with it, you know, we learned heart and soul, right? All music from there. key for me and D, but together they don't work, right? All the right, I was playing the melody for the most part. He was playing the chords for the most part. It didn't sound good, did it? It didn't work. I was going to do that all by myself, but it's really hard to play in two different keys at once. <laughs> I just want you to know that. That's really tough. But, but uh, think about that. He was right. I was right. But it didn't work. See, God wants us to know true freedom, real freedom, where we're becoming more and more the unique, unrepeatable miracle that he made us to be. And it's not working sometimes. Right? It's not working. There's discord. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't feel right. Life's not right. Because we can't have our way all the time in every situation and submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You don't get both. Okay? It's when we allow God to take over our lives and we submit our will to Him. We say, Lord, come into my life. I, whew, I need it. I, I got a lot of garbage here. I need forgiveness. I, I'm bound up in a lot of ways. I need freedom. He goes, you know how long I've been waiting for you to ask? <clears throat> I've been waiting years for you to ask. I'm happy to come in and give you freedom, forgiveness, grace, a fresh start, the power to go forward, wisdom in difficult situations. I'll actually love people through you if you have it difficult to love. Just let me be Lord of your life. Then you can be truly free. Isn't that what we want? Now with freedom you have a choice. So, in fact in the Old Testament, today before you is a choice. Life and death. And then, the person said, choose life. But you have a choice. Right? Say, no, nah, I think I'll take death. But hey, I'll be with all my friends. 
Or you say, no, you know, I think I'm going to choose life. That's the choice we have. We have the freedom to choose. Over and over, day by day, minute by minute, situation by situation, conversation by conversation, we can choose life. Say, Lord, you be, you be Lord of my life. I'm done driving this. I'll get in the back seat. You, you drive. And then we discover that what he wants for us is what we've wanted all along. He said, well, let me give it to you as a gift. Your freedom. You know I golf excessively, okay, I have for a while. Not very good, but excessive, you know, committed, committed. And um, this week I played in a pro-am, so there's like PGA golfers and guys like me. Different. <laughs> different. About halfway around, I was so frustrated, I was just so terrible, and I was ashamed and all that stuff. And one of the pros came over and was giving me some <coughs> tips, you know, some, some help. And he said, you know, your stance is good, you've got balance, your, your grip is really good, everything's fine. You take the, the club back, everything's fine. I'm concerned about your head. <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I go, you mean, oh, I know, you should keep your head down, or, you know, don't raise your head, or don't move your head back, or, you know, all, all of that stuff. Am I moving my head around? He said, well, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to that. I'm wondering what's in your head. <laughs> and I go, what are you talking about? You're a golf pro. You're not a psychiatrist, you know? They've tried. But um, he said, I was just wondering what's in your head. Like, with this next show, what, what do you see? I went, well, I got these trees here on the left. And I gotta keep the ball low because the branches are coming out and I don't wanna get up into the trees. But then there's trees in our course, there's trees on the right too. And if you get over there, then you're doomed because you can't get anything. And, and then these sand traps, they're called traps, right? Okay, they're hazards. I gotta, I gotta not go into those, you know, so I'm really watching those. And then, uh, you know, then there's this hill up here and, uh, and the uh, beverage cart is over there. I don't wanna hit them, you know. And, uh, he goes, that's your problem. What's in your head? You've named every negative thing that can possibly happen on this next shot. I go, yeah, that's what I do. I'm a preacher. You know? I can see all the things that are wrong. I focus on that. That's what I do. You know, I can nail that sin. Yes. Boom. Yeah. He goes, it doesn't help you with golf. He said, all you need to do is think, where do you want the ball to go? And then hit it. Swing freely. Swing it as free as you want. Don't even think about anything else. Just where you want the ball to go. They said, and you might try smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So, yeah, but, you know, think about that. I'm obsessing about everything else. And this golf pro is going, your head screwed up, pastor. <laughs> You're a mess, and, and, and I am a mess, and, 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 and that's what Jesus wants to free us from. He wants to take all the memories and the hurts and the pains and the things that we've carried with us, and he wants to free us from that, and he wants to take all of our worries and anxieties and cares for the future, and he wants to free us from that. And he wants to take all of the issues and the things that we're kind of short-term fighting against, and he wants to free us from that. So we can live freely and effectively with integrity. Let Jesus have his way. Let him have his way today. Will you? Let us pray. Lord, we need you so much. And we undermine you in so many ways. But thank you, Lord, for not giving up on us. Thank you for not abandoning us when we go off on our own. 
Begin your transformation inside each one of us today, step by step by step. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. Amen.